everyone, how are you going? Hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm going to share this one for you. The Bible is God's written word to us. Sometimes I think that we all forget that or we do not fully embrace it. We save letters from a loved one or a spouse and read them time to time to remember the words and the feelings of that letter. Maybe you have a saved letter from a high school sweetheart if you were born before MySpace or Facebook or Twitter era. You remember in the op opening the letter and just pouring over the words. That should be our mindset when we open the Bible. We should see it as God's word to you and me. It's not just an information book of do's and don'ts, but rather it's a book about God. Here are some quotes. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and tensions of the heart. When the covers of the Bible or the answers for the problems of man face, Ronald Reagan. Take all that you can from this book upon reason and balance the faith and you'll live and die a happier man. When a skeptic exposes a surprise to see him reading a Bible, Abraham Lincoln. But for this book we could not know right from wrong, Abraham Lincoln. I believe the Bible is the best God has ever given to man. All the good from the Saviour of the world is communicated to us through this book. Quotes from scholars, theologians, pastors. The Bible is very easy to understand but we Christians are a bunch of scheming swindlers. We pretend to be unable to understand it because we know very well what the minute we understand we are obliged to act accordingly. There are times when solitude is better than society, when silence is wiser than speech. We should be better Christians if we were more alone, waiting upon God and gathering through med meditation on his word spiritual strength for labour in his service, we ought to muse upon those things of God. Because this, we get, we thus get the real nourishment out of them. Why is it that some Christians, although they hear many sermons, but make slow advances in the divine life? Because they neglect their closets, they do not thoughtfully meditate on God's words. They love the wheat and they do not grind it. They would have the corn, but they will not go forth into the fields to gather it. The fruit hangs upon the tree, but they will not pluck it. The water flows through the feet, but they will not stop to drink it. From such folly deliver us, O Lord. Charles Spurgeon Holy Scriptures are our letters from home. Augustine of Hippo Reading the Bible will help you get to know the word, but if it's when you put it down in your life and live your life, you get to know the author. It ain't parts of the Bible that I can't understand that bother me. It's the parts that I do understand. Out of out of a hundred men, one will read the Bible. The other 99 will read the Christian. The Bible was not given for our information, but for our transformation. The Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. If you really want to rebel, get a job, cut your grass, read your Bible and shut up because no one is doing that. A good church is a Bible-centered church. Nothing is important as this, not a large congregation, a witty pastor or tangible experiences of the Holy Spirit. You Christians look at the doc... You Christians look after a document containing enough dynamite to blow all civilizations to pieces, turn the world upside down, and bring peace to a battle-torn planet. But you treat it as though it's nothing more than a piece of literature. The reason you don't like the Bible, you old sinner, is because you know it's all about you. The primary purpose of reading the Bible is not to know the Bible, but to know God. Quotes from those who are sceptical about the Bible. You believe in a book that has talking animals, wizards, witches, demons, sticks turning to snakes, food falling from the sky, people walking on water, all sorts of magic, observed and primitive stories. And you say that we're the ones that need our help. The Bible has noble poultry in it and some good morals and wealth of obscenity and upwards of a thousand lies. Alcohol may be man's worst enemy, but the Bible says, love your enemy, Frank Sinatra. I have a problem with people who take the Constitution loosely and the Bible literally. To be fair, much of the Bible is not systematically evil, but just plain weird. If you would expect a chaotically cobbled together anthropology of disjoint documents, composed, revised, translated, distorted, and improved by hundreds of anonymous authors, editors, copyists unknown to us, and mostly unknown to each other, spanning nine centuries. You can point to the alleged miracles of the Bible or any other religious text, but they are nothing old stories but fabricated by men and they're exaggerated over time. 
in the Bible it says you have to forgive 70 times 7. I want you all to know I'm keeping a chart. <laughs> Clinton. <laughs> I read some quotes from people that don't believe the Bible is true or real to remind us all that some are hopelessly lost and need to find God. May we never be so callous that we forget that there are lost and hurting people around us every day that need hope and good news of Jesus Christ in the Bible. I hope that these quotes remind you of falling in love with God for the first time. God's word helps us to get to know the Creator. God's word should be revered and mediated upon. It should be memorized and internalized. Take some time today alone with God and his word. It will be time well spent with him. What does the Bible say about cutting people off, going no contact? Forgiveness is an unconditional love and beautiful godly qualities to possess. In every human relation, forgiveness helps to heal, restore even the most broken of relationships, often making it stronger and happier. Without forgiveness in your life will be bitterness, resentment and grudges. But what are you supposed to do when you have a person in your life who will not apologise, accept any fault or change their behaviour? Are you supposed to live your life following the principle from Matthew 5.39? But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. Many Christians get caught up in this verse thinking it means to always allow others to walk over them and to take advantage of them. Wrong. To turn the other cheek does not imply that you should consistently pace yourself in unhealthy situations. Instead, it is referring to not responding in a similar manner, offensive comments, scoff at theft and type of toxic behaviour. The reason this principle is so powerful is because it takes so much strength and to respond to hatred with love. However, the Bible also warns us against people who are deceitful, malice, abusive, immoral, and self-obsessed. You're not supposed to always give people the benefit of the doubt and grant them unconditional acceptance. Below, the biblical answers to the most common questions about cutting people off and not going no contact. How can I cut someone out of my life and forgive them? Forgive them. Forgiveness and no contract are two different concepts. Forgiveness doesn't mean that there are no consequences for their actions and that you should put yourselves back in the position of being hurt again. True forgiveness means that you don't want to seek revenge on that person. It means that you are going to commit to not hanging into the bitterness against that person. Usually, forgiveness takes a time, a lifetime of effort. It may, not take, it may take a commitment of every day to not hold on to hatred for someone. If you continue to put that toxic person in a position where they can continue to hurt you over and over again, read the Bible verses below. How will I know when to cut someone off? If you've had an argument or a disagreement with someone, it doesn't mean that you need to cut them off out of your life. Differing opinions are healthy and completely normal part of human interactions. You should be able to have discernment disagreement with someone while still understanding that they have their right viewpoint right to their viewpoint the one thing you need to focus on is trust relationships are built on mutual trust if someone has proven themselves to be untrustworthy don't try to explain away the reasons of their dishonesty have a healthy have they health have, have they blatantly lied to you stole from you abused you been two-faced threatened you cheated on you taken advantage of your relationship and being to toxic influence in your life the best thing you can do for yourself and your family is to remove yourself from a place of continued harm. This doesn't always mean cutting them off out of your life immediately. Next step will answer this question. What steps should I take before going no contact? Under no circumstances is this referring to abuse or criminal acts. The Bible is clear about separating yourself from violent and evil people. First, the Bible instructs that you should handle disputes and loves with goal of restoration, Matthew 8.15. When you talk to someone privately, you can address misunderstandings and hope that the problem can be solved. This way, you can both avoid gossip and hurt feelings. The Bible also talks about the importance of having a witness with you. If this person has a tendency to lie or twist your words, this step is invaluable. Matthew 8:16. If a person refuses to accept any fault and responds in a hateful way, it is best for you to go your separate ways. 1 Corinthians 5:10. Christians are instructed on how to handle disputes in Matthew 18. Are there Bible verses that talk to about toxic people and narcissists? Romans 16:17. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause division and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching of what you have learned. Keep away from them. Proverbs 13:10. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Proverbs 26:11. As a dog returns to its vomit, so do fools repeat their folly.
Matthew 15, 14, leave them their blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Proverbs 23, 9, do not speak to fools, for they will scorn your prudent ways. James 1, 26, those who consider themselves religious and do not keep tight rein on their tongues to deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last day. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godly, godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. 1 Corinthians 15.33 Don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. James 3.16 For when you have enemy and self selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. What good will going no contact do for me? One of the worst misunderstandings about no going no contact with toxic people is when people accuse the survivor, the one being hurt, of being bitter and unforgiving. Choosing to distance yourself if someone doesn't make you unforgiving at all simply shows that the relationship has not been restored to you to continued abuse or irreconcilable differences. When you have suffered abuse and injustice from someone, you need to take care of yourself and put an end to their ability to bully you. When someone refuses to take responsibility for their actions and continues to act as if nothing is wrong with their behaviour, they cannot be allowed to stay in a place of influence in your life. Choosing to cut someone off will allow you to heal and move on with your life. How do I actually go no contact? One, once you have prayerfully made the decision to cut someone off, you must remain committed to your decision. If you're dealing with a narcissistic person, they will make no contact very difficult for you to keep. They may consistently message you, love bomb you, guilt trip you, spread stories about you and find other ways to subvertly remind you of their presence. Remember, forgiveness doesn't mean restoring them back into your life. One common tactic of toxic people is to be suddenly willing to apologise and change their ways. See that a lot, don't we? The only thing that can be proved genuine is change is time and consistent change of the behaviour. No contact should never be broken simply because someone wants to talk to you. Don't make a commitment that you ain't willing to commit. Once you remove someone from your life, you need to absolutely commit 100% to it. How should I move forward after cutting someone off? Once you've removed someone from your life, try to move forward and focus on healing. Never re take revenge into your own hands. This includes talking be behind their backs and spreading stories about them. Ephesians 4, 31, 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. Proverbs 24, 29. Do not say... I'll do to them as they've done to me. I'll pay them back for what they did. Romans 12:17. Do not repay evil, anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Romans 12:19. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. If someone has treated you in an abusive or toxic manner, it's not your responsibility or right to get even with them. God made it very clear that he will take care of the situation. You need to focus on your effort in finding healing on yourself often. The first step of this process is pursuing forgiveness for the hurt that you were caused. Many people have stood up in a courtroom and publicly told a criminal that they forgave them for their horrific crime against themselves or a family member. If you were to ask them why they did this, they would always mention that it was an important step towards healing from the tragedy. The same principle applies to when cutting someone off.